Good evening and welcome to The 5%. I'm your host, Alyssa Gregory. Tonight's topic is diversity in Hollywood. Joining us tonight, we have Najib Felix, PSU alum, class of 2013, psychology major and current actor. Nicole Urban, sophomore engineering science major and member of Photo Fawn organization. And last but not least, Jonas St. Preux, sophomore broadcast journalism major and host of Hollywood Now, which is on PSN TV. So, how are you guys doing tonight? I know it's finals week, but you guys all came out here. How's it going? It's great. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, really excited to be excited. here. It's definitely going to be a great episode. You guys are going to learn a lot. So, you know, maybe you can get some study in while you're here, right? <laughs> okay, now our first question is, in the top 307 directors of all time, based on lifetime box office gross, there are only 10 black directors represented, all of which are male. Why do you think black directors are so underrepresented in Hollywood? And why do you think female black directors are almost not represented at all? Maybe, in a certain respect, the people that have the power that green light, that hit or give the green light to a, a film are older white men or rich old white men. Right. And to a certain extent, they have uh, some prejudices or some maybe outdated views of um, of just the film industry, and maybe to them they see uh, black uh, directors, um, male or female, as maybe not as uh, traditional, right. and they don't accept that. And, and I think the biggest reason why uh, black female directors are underrepresented is because they uh, it's really hard to be black and it's really hard to be female, and to be both is really tough. Um, I wouldn't go that far as to um, definitely understand what you're saying. But um, my thing is, it's a, it's, it's a business. It's all yeah. about what's gonna make them money. Mm -hmm. And you have like the Weinstein brothers, the Warner yeah. brothers, they've worked with African Americans yeah. before. They have no issue working with African. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have anything against them. I think it's just, will this make me money? Yeah when you can just go with what traditionally has been making you money. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if you add African-Americans in the mix that it's not going to make them money? Do you think that the thing is, I, what's going to happen? Um, it's all about audience. Right. You want to get something that's going to connect to the majority. Yeah. Exactly. So for, for example, um, lately they've been showing, that you've been having more movies with more African-Americans. Mm -hmm. I think for it to be possible, for they want to see that if these movies are doing as good, then, then they'll be more interesting. To, for instance, like as you see how, how much movies lately, you, you feel like you've seen Kevin Hart everywhere. Yeah, it's because they see that he's making the money. For instance, with Sony and mm -hmm. everything like that. Even though Sony had their little controversy yeah. with the exactly mm -hmm. where, by proving my point, where they said they wouldn't make a movie with Denzel because black movies, African American movies, don't make as much money as any traditional movie would make. Well, I mean, in this case, she was speaking, uh, she was talking about the directors themselves. So if a director has, does an all white or just uh, some roles, they're still underrepresented as directors. Um, and, you know, speaking in roles specifically, uh, I mean, Kevin Hart is a big, is a big seller. So does, so is uh, Will Smith, for example. They're um, internationally Morgan Freeman. known. Morgan Freeman is also internationally known. And I think, uh, the problem with just that is the fact that they are going in tradition, and if they kind of, they're not allowing for new things to happen. So they do, if they let new things happen, people get used to seeing that, and you know, if um, any any actor is in, say, Desert Washington, or any new actor, is playing a role that maybe normally Leonardo DiCaprio would, would play, for example, um, the role, uh, the role doesn't really change. The person, the person, the way the person looks does, but not who or what that person is identifying with, you know and what I mean? Also, what you have to understand is, if it's not broke, why fix it? Yeah, if you're going sure. with something that's been giving, making you money, mm -hmm. there's no, they're, they're scared to experiment, because this is their money. This is yeah. their money. You don't want to throw it into something and lose it. Mm -hmm. So they're just going with what traditionally oh, has been making the money. Now, like it's 2015, obviously. Things are changing. Things aren't yeah. how they were in the 50s, obviously. And you were saying that they're, they're scared of making a, a diverse cast or crew, but obviously there is an importance of having that. What do you think that importance is of having, you know, different faces? And this isn't just African Americans. This yeah. goes for Latinos. This goes for Asian. Just minorities as a whole. So what you're asking is like how this influences like the people who are right. watching. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like 
it must be hard because that's how you can like identify yourself yeah. and it's hard that you're always portrayed as the same way and like you always have to look up to like the white characters being the protagonists. I don't mm -hmm. know if that makes any sense. Yeah, but, yeah. It definitely does make a lot of sense. Um, I was, uh, for example, like a big show, a diverse cast um, in shows right now is like The Walking Dead, for example. Yeah. And they have a diverse cast and their um, lead character is white. Um, but it's like people can maybe relate to, for example, uh, not having enough food. So if you're in your, with your roommate and you're like, man, we only have like two packs of ramen left. Yeah. Uh, you're like, man, I can understand how the struggle that would be. Exactly. But no like one would be color, like, yeah. exactly. But no one would say like, just because um, he's white and he has only two packs of ramen left, I can't relate to that. Exactly, yeah. you know. And then the same thing with, uh, uh, with, but you can't relate. You can't relate to zombies. So anybody put in that position, whether they're black, white, Asian, or or Hispanic, they're dealing with something that's a that's a fantasy. Yeah. And that show is great because of the writing. Maybe also the actors are great too. But if you find uh, an actor that is a minority that is also good, I'm sure it'll do it just as well. Although we are on the road to recovery, people still feel as though there is not equal representation when it comes to you know um, in Hollywood. Who do you think it starts with? Like, are the actors going to have to boycott? Does it start with the directors? You know, taking a step back, or do you think it starts with us, the audience? Um, I seriously, it starts at the top. Yeah. With the whole, as I said, the Weinstein brothers, Warner mm -hmm. Brothers, stuff like that. So it's at the top, and the only way it can, they can see, like try to make a change, is if they see success in other things. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a stock. If you see somebody investing something and they're making money off of it, yeah. you want to get into it too. So it, once they start seeing that money's being made, then they'll want to get involved too. So yeah. How about you? <laughs> I feel like it takes time. Like, the audience is just so used to how it is right now, yeah. which is, it shouldn't be that way. Like, people are people, but you're just, it's just the way it is. And, like, in order to, like, get the change to come about, like, someone has to take the risk and, like, make the investment mm -hmm. and, like, just get it out there. And eventually, it should become not an issue. I mean, it's going to take a lot of time. I mean, that's the thing. It, it is time. But the problem with that is there are people that are resistant. So from the beginning, for example, um, I believe it was um, uh, Sidney Poitier who won the first Academy Award. Um, at that point, they as were an African -American. as an African-American. Yes, that's a clear. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that. Um, but uh, yeah, he was the first. And then at that point, you know, they were saying all the roles were for white men, yeah. for example. And then when Sidney Poitier became um, one, you know, they're like, oh, maybe we can change this. So someone, they have to see someone exactly. to Lee do for it. Example. See, for example, yeah. but it, you know, um, right now it doesn't have to be that way because we are changing, we are shifting. Um, like for example, and I know this isn't a production company like Paramount, but like Marvel Studios are, is making a lot of uh, uh, superhero, films. superhero films, but they're taking chances. They're not going with like the Batman or Spider-Man only. They're doing a lot of different stuff that is that could not work because no one heard of Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardian, I never heard of. No that. one heard of that yeah. and became one of the best films. <laughs> yeah. You know. So if you start making, you know, making those experiments and just trying it, it would work. And the problem is, is that they'll make let's say 50, 50 uh, films in a year, and they'll make two films, two or three films with black leads in it. Then they're like, all right, well, if only what only that one black lead film did very well. But also, it was very uneven. You only made three three films. Yes. So if you make half and half, you'll see definitely a bigger change. But like you said, as a business, it's like if it isn't broke, don't fix it. As an actor, I have a question for you. Have you noticed any um, racism? Like if you're going to a casting call, mm -hmm. have you thought in the back of your head as a psychology major mm -hmm. as well? Have you thought in the back of your head, you know, maybe I won't get this part for my appearance, or you know, I, I read this book and I'm thinking that the average person is envisioning this character, you know? Yeah. So have you ever had that run in? Um, I write, I won't, I can't say, I can't say yes because no one said no, because I, no one said uh, we're not, it's no because you're black or if I come in they treat me differently. I didn't see that. But um, just being here, for example, I've, I've auditioned for a few sh like student films mm -hmm. and most of, most of the people making those films are white. Right. Um, and the, those people that wrote it. So usually they have a white person for that role thinking of that. And I'm doing a short film now, um, it's a comedy, and I went in and I'm like, I'm probably not gonna get this role, but I want the experience, you know, to you know, try it out. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure it was for a white role, but um, 
I did well enough where, you know, they gave me the role, but they had to change things because I have, well, I have a white brother, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, there's that, and I guess you just have to go in and change them because if you're good enough, I believe, if they're open-minded, if you're good enough, yeah. or you're unique enough or interesting enough, they'll change the role for you, to fit right. you. Exactly. And that's what I hope happens. They can't deny your talent. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's what I'm At the for. end of the day, I feel like that's what it should root to, is just pure talent. Pure talent. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys are all young. We have like a young panel today. When you guys go to the movies, like what type of cast are you looking for? Like what do you want to see? Do you want to see a reflection of yourself or do you, you know, want to see different, you know, different mixtures of people on the TV? Um, honestly, I can I guess I'm different, but I just I don't pay attention to that. I, when I go see a movie, I just go see it cuz it's the content. it's, in, Is it it's more intriguing story yeah. that you guys are looking for. Yeah. Um, I think I think as a minority, we we don't have the luxury of just being like I'm going to see this movie because it reflects me. I can relate to it because most it, most films are, or shows are white characters. And so we can't we, we don't we can't feel that you know unless we see for example a Tyler Perry movie we're like you know what we want to see that because it reminds me of my family, mm -hmm. but we can't just we don't have the luxury of picking and choosing kind of. Well, I totally agree with you guys. I can tell that we have a great panel, but if you guys stick with us, we're going to hit them with another question. Hey guys, welcome back. Now our second question is, in Hollywood, the leaders of the five biggest movie studios in the country are white. Why do you think studio executives might be hesitant to invest with films containing minority leads? Um, I'll answer this one. So, um, white people, because they're in charge, they might not see necessarily the need to be proactive about this. They might not like even notice really what they're doing, and maybe they don't want to make the investment to make the change necessarily. Right. Um, I know 12 Years a Slave and Selma, like obviously they did well when it came to the box offices, but they later stated that, you know, while they were trying to get funding, they had an issue, like big studios were primi primarily ran by, you know, white people weren't really giving them the time of day. So instead they had to go to black investors, independent producers, they even had to do crowd crowdfunding. And that was definitely an issue. And I think that brings me back to the idea that a lot of African Americans in America go by that we have to work harder. Not just African Americans, just minorities in general. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think that African American or you know just minorities have to work harder? We have to show our worth. And by that we have to work harder. So we have to show that anyone's investment is, is, uh, is good in our hands, is made, um, they get their profit back basically. And that is, it's very tough to do that. I think a lot of like white people don't realize how privileged they really are and how easy they really have it. Like, it's kind of sad that that's the way things are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jonas, how about you? You're an African American male growing up, 2015. Do you feel as though you personally do you feel like you have to work harder? Um. Honestly, uh, yeah, of course. I feel um, anything in life you have to do you must work hard at it. The saying goes, you know. When you work harder, you get luckier. That's true. <laughs> so I feel like no matter what color, you must work hard for everything that you have. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you guys have heard of the game called the King of Hills. It's like a child's game mm -hmm. or King of the Castle where pretty much you work hard, you get to the top, this top position, and you want to hold that spot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like human beings in general, once you get somewhere you want to maintain your spot, a lot of the times and you want to keep people who look like you up top, you want to hook your family up, you want to hook mm -hmm. up your friends just like um, decades ago. And even now there's a spoil system in the government where even though someone might not be qualified, if you know them, you have that relationship, you're going to want to bring them in office. Do you feel like, you know, a lot of people at the top directors that are primarily white, do you think that they have a fear of someone else coming in and doing better than them or do they just want to, you know, hold their spot? What do you think it is that keeps them all up there? Um, I, for me, like I said before, it's all about the bottom line. Um, it's just whatever um, is just gonna get make the money. It's a business, mm -hmm. so whatever makes the money, then they'll be down for. How about you? Um, I think uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to to imagine a situation like that because at that point, um, the people that are, that are in power that um, give the green light for projects to go through have always been the same. So those that, uh, that are 
own different production companies or studios, they, um, they've always been um, white males. And now there's other companies going up that are, that are starting their own studios, like Tyler Perry or Kevin Hart, I believe. But they can't get to that level not anytime soon because they've been in, they've been in business for decades now. But that wraps it up for our second question, but stick with us because we have a lot more questions for our panel. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with us. So now we're going to move on to our next question. Now, do you think networks such as BET and Nouveau TV forge a gap between white and non-white audiences, or do you think these networks play a crucial role in diversifying television? Honestly, I kind of feel like it has more to do with making a gap because I, I've never really watched anything on these networks, and I don't know. I don't know much about them. Do you watch BET at all? Do I? I don't watch BET. Um, I think. Well, actually, I believe. I think. I think Kevin Hart's uh, Real Husbands of Husbands. Yeah. Oh yes, I, that's I do show. watch that. that. Okay. That's hilarious. But um, <laughs> I watch that. Um, but I don't watch. I don't watch much else. Um, I think it's cool because it gives something to like uh, for minorities to have their own because there are so many networks that are just mostly white so it gives them to have like it allows them to have something but then it does like you said bridge a gap it's a gap oh. it doesn't bridge it it just widens the gap oh no doubt about it because there's certainly people that are angry that there's a BET that exists yeah. like I remember um, during the BET Awards mm. I was on Twitter and it was trending and then one girl wrote BET Awards more like EBT Awards <laughs> it, it was I chuckled yeah. it was yeah. funny but you know clearly she was not about it, and there's mm -hmm. also other tweets where people were like, "Oh, there's a BET. Wow, that's not fair. Like, imagine all the the stuff that we would get if, um, what controversy we get if there was a you know WET, like yeah. a white entertainment television. Yeah. So um, I, there are people that don't understand mm -hmm. why there's a BET, and so there's certainly a, a gap that's forged mm -hmm. because of channel such as BET. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting what you just said. Like, if there was, you know, a white entertainment television, yeah. what do you guys think? If let, let's say tomorrow they're like, okay, we have white entertainment television, what do you think the reactions would be from people? Need to uh, need to understand when it comes to certain African Americans is that they feel like they want something for their own. Yeah. As their own. And they feel like, what would be the point of a white entertainment television if there's USA so Network, other. TNT, exist. Yeah. Yeah, ABC, NBC. You all have it, it's just not specifically said it. Like for example, let's say if there was a BET but it wasn't called Black Entertainment Television. Mm -hmm. Do you think there would be the same um, anger towards it? And I don't think so. I think it's just because it's point. specifically called BET, Black Entertainment Television, that it gets people upset. I think that's interesting though because you said like, USA is white, yeah. so if they made a WET, it's like every other thing. I, w I mean, I wouldn't get upset oh, because not. Would, it's literally the same, care. it's like a, exactly. another channel. You could change USA Network and just say Just WET. say that and that's what it would be. Yeah, it, but um, I think what BET should do is is recognize that there are other minorities in the world. Exactly. As, or not even minorities, but even add you know, um, white shows because by doing that you're segregating your exactly. itself, which you're, is what we don't want. You're separating yourself from everybody exactly. else because there's not an Asian entertainment television yeah. Yeah, or true. Native American. And they're just as much as a minority. Entity. Exactly. And actually, there are more underrepresented yeah. in, in, on television than African Americans because more, even though it's not as much as some people are satisfied with, mm -hmm. there's still um, not as much African American that they feel. I feel like there's, we're starting to get more, such as you know, Kerry Washington scandal, mm -hmm. how to get away with murder, show. how to get away with <laughs> that's you one see? show you actually watch. Yeah, how to get Thursday. get away with murder shows like that. So yeah, yeah I feel like we're increasing on television mm -hmm. yeah. prime time. Yeah, so you don't watch it. Yeah. What what diverts you from going to well, where I'm from, Channel Fifty One? Yeah. What diverts you from going to BET? It was serving its purpose during that time when it was created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I feel it's unnecessary. Maybe needs a rebranding. I want to see would there be outrage if they took out BET. They, it was still this, it would be the same channel, the name. but they changed the name. Mm -hmm. I want to see if there would be outrage because I can honestly say I don't believe African Americans are still watching BET. I th well, I think what's interesting is like you said before that if it isn't broke, don't fix it. And what they want is money, it's a business. Yeah. And the fact that um, that African Americans aren't running BET shows that and is now hip hop and all of that. That's what makes money. Mm -hmm. Now it's what, yeah. you know, the style comes from hip hop. Mm -hmm. Music comes, like everything is hip hop now. So mm -hmm. going in that direction is what's making them money, which is 
re really weird because when you said before how the way it was, it was newscast. It was like it was maybe respectable. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like there was a need for it initially yeah. to definitely introduce and get the African American yeah. into More the TV. On television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's but, say you're like a producer over at BT. What would because what BT is mostly so they say online is that the BT awards is what gets them the most views usually mm -hmm. like because it's shining African Americans in a positive light for their music they're acting mm -hmm. all their accolades it's in a positive light what else would you add to the network to give it more of a positive feel just better writing better writing mm -hmm. it does better. start with writing that's true better writing if you get uh, better writing better creative people mm -hmm. then. My thing is, like, Shonda Rhimes, mm -hmm. everybody knows her. She's the African-American lady that made Grey's Anatomy, mm -hmm. um, Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal. Very successful. Yes. See, now, if they got, had gotten her, mm -hmm. like, I'm telling you right, if they put those shows on BET, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People, more people would be watching it. So what do you think that's the true. issue is for that not to be happening? Is it lack of funding, where she's like, I'm going where the money is? Because that's her roots, obviously. Yeah, sure. But she's definitely making a lot of money. Yeah. But the thing is, it's just if BET had better people more people, more audience. Team. Yeah, more a better creative team, then you would have better shows, which would bring people on. Yeah. yeah, and it's also about whether they want that show on there or not, because that's not what the, the normal shows they run. Exactly. So if they started running Scandal and things like that, which is what I think would need is better. Well, more viewers would watch it yeah. then. Well, that, that's why, also, I can't, like, not continue knocking down BT, because <laughs> um, yeah. I, can, I have to say one thing positive about them. They do have a show called being Mary Jane with um, Gabriella Union. Okay. And that certainly gets people watching mm -hmm. at like Tuesday nights because I'll go on my Twitter and I'll see a trend. Wait, what's it called? Being Mary Jane. I don't watch it. <laughs> yes, you do. But I just, no, I don't watch it at all. It's just I hear about it a lot. I have friends, yeah. Hear good things. So I guess we come, we can come to the conclusion that they need better shows and a better Definitely. creative team. Yeah. That wraps it up for this question, but if you guys stay with us, we'll have one final question for our panel. Now, our last question is, what are some of the common stereotypes that you see minority actors play in TV and films? Well, a lot of times you see them as the funny, like, best friend. You'll see that. Yeah, yeah. Or Asians, you'll see as, like, the business tycoon. Definitely can't forget um, the baby daddy. Yeah, the baby deadbeat dad. <laughs> yeah, deadbeat dad, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, drug dealer. Drug dealer. Mm -hmm. Gang member. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the females? Because that sounds like a lot of the stereotypes they put under black males. What do you think? Single mother. Single mom. Yeah. Um. Always something we have to do with the church. Yep. Yeah. Anything yeah. you watch, you have to watch, there's always a black lady in the yeah. church. And that's the problem is that the, that they they're stereotypically playing these characters, and that's what people think those people are like. Yeah. Or or they'll be like the historical, like you were talking about Selma, Twelve Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. Like those are the big movies that made it good and um, they were like based on true stories. Mm -hmm. so. One of my um, favorite radio personalities, his name is uh Charlemagne the God. Yeah. He's on <laughs> Power, Power one oh five and one thing he said that resonated with me is like he said he's tired of seeing um African Americans play the role of like a slave or a butler. Mm -hmm. Or stuff like that. He said that's why one of his favorite movies is Django. Yeah. It's a twist. Yeah, it's like African. Mm -hmm. It's like getting back mm -hmm. at them for what they've done to them. He said he wants to see more movies like that. And I totally understand why. Like, because Django was a great movie. It was. I loved it. And it's not only because it was like oh, a revenge it, story. Yeah, it was just the action. The action. The, 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 the story was great. The acting was great, and mm -hmm. it was just one wonderful story. And one, one thing also that's very interesting is like uh, the a character, a stereotypical character. Um, white maybe white men play is someone kind of being the saving grace of that black man so yes. or oh, that those minority kids like, like the blind side yeah. or like there are a lot of films where the, where the teacher comes to like the, the school and just changes their lives also if you think about it Django was kind of like that it was that's what it was, was it was the, the white man yeah that came in played by uh, Christopher Waltz which I love yes he, he did a great job he did awesome. I got sad when he died yeah, I was like, no. Sorry if I killed it for anybody. Spoiler alert. It was just like, I'm sorry if I killed it for anybody, but you should have been, you should have slain better. <laughs> but um, yeah, when he died, well, he saved him yeah. from being a slave, mm -hmm. and they, together they rode off and yeah. did some bad stuff. Yeah. So, what are some roles currently played by whites that you would like to see maybe filled by a different race? There are roles, for example, recently, it was about, about a month ago, there was a little controversy because Michelle Rodriguez, who plays for Fast and Furious, mm -hmm. said that um, minorities need to stop taking roles from mm -hmm. white people. And most so people got angry because they didn't understand what she was saying. It. But I understood what she was saying, as in if the role was meant for a white person, mm -hmm. 
like for instance, if say Green Lantern is white, it is, it is a white Green Lantern, it is a black Green Lantern. Yeah. If, there is a, if, if they want to um, you, um, play, show the story of the white Green Lantern, then it would make sense to put a black guy as that white yeah. Green Lantern. So each, each person has their own role. Mm -hmm. So if you see Iron Man, it wouldn't make sense to put a black Iron Man. There is, and he's War Machine. Yeah. So each person has their own role. So it, that's what I'm saying. Well, something interesting about that is what is that put, puts minorities at a disadvantage, or even females, um, is the fact that they, these iconic roles were made in a time where it was only representing white uh, white men. Yeah. So we can't, you know, of course, we can't uh, just change them, yeah. but it's hard to make something new because all the, all the cool powers, at least, were taken by the white males. Not all of them. There was also um, Static Shock. Well, no, no, static of shock. course. That's my... That's, I, I, wanna, I, think, that's I want them to make a movie. I, static Shock. I'm literally, that's what I want to play. We have to protest. We have I to do something. I am going to make that. that Don't say that because I want to... Oh, I'm sorry. Name. Shh. Don't make a movie. No. Do, you, do you guys think that changing the race of something that was originally written for you, maybe like a white male, do you think that's, that that's going to affect their ratings in a negative yeah. light? There was actually a big controversy with Thor. When it first came out, Edris Elba played one of the oh, yeah, the time traveling with the sword. Yeah, the guy who yeah. saw everything, yeah. the portal guy. And there are actually people that are really upset because he represented a god, but it was a, min a minor character, and they were really upset about that. Also, if you think about it, um, there's also that controversy of who's going to be, be the new James Bond. Yeah, with they were talking about People were upset they, about that. Uh, they were considering Edges Alba. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure if it was Rush Limbaugh or anything like that. And he was like, he can't be James Bond. James Bond is white. Yeah, but James Bond is. What's funny is that James Bond is just is a code name. It's not even yeah. a person. It's, it gets passed down. And also, there's also the other argument where um, roles such as like African Americans being played by white people, for instance, mm -hmm. um, it was not necessarily African American, but um, the movie The Hunger Games yeah. in the book. Um, the character was described. The main character was described as having olive oh, uh, olive skin. Yeah. So she was. Darker, real, right? Yeah, no, yeah. not real. No. The main character, Katniss. Katniss, Katniss. Katniss. Okay. was actually darker than she. Um, but then they gave the role to Jennifer Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it that was happened in the last Airbender as too. well. Yeah, it was, it was whitewashed apparently. Yeah. That's what it's yeah. called. It, was whitewash. it was white kid playing an Asian. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah that certainly that definitely bothered some people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it honestly needs to work both ways. Yeah. Like think about growing up, you know, there's like uh, Zoe 101, iCarly, like yeah. most of the shows on you know Nickelodeon, Teen, all that stuff. You didn't really see a ref well. I mean, I personally didn't see a reflection of myself. But why is it taken? Why is it taking so long? Do you guys think? Um, they're getting with the times. Okay. Let's just say maybe it wouldn't be as accepted even five years ago or six years ago mm -hmm. or eight years ago. So now they're just as the time goes by, they're being more accepted. Mm -hmm. I think it's just being more like noticed as an issue too. I agree. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So they're starting to make more steps. I think my only argument is that I think we've been with the time years ago because they had that so Raven, yeah, and yeah, people true. really liked exactly. that. Yeah. And no one, and at that time, I don't think we were like, oh, that's fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh Prince, everyone like the best thing that's ever happened. Exactly. 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 Everyone loves yeah. Raven. And we can't forget about like the pod, like the Cosby Show, like the yeah. mom yeah. was a lawyer, yeah. that was a doctor. Like, yeah, that exactly. And people watch that. Yeah. People like that, no matter if they're black or white, they watch that. I think it's just by category, just saying, all right, we're going to make more money with this person. Exactly. If you think that way, you're going to make that money, but you don't, you're never testing it and trying to have somebody else. Honestly, it's just, they want something good. Just give them something exactly. good. Exactly, that's what we like want, it's something exactly. good. And if you give that, if you get put a good, if you have good writers, like you said, yeah. and good actors. A great creative team, then yeah, make something happen. happen regardless. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, we have a great panel, but if you stick with us, we'll be right back. Alrighty, so that concludes our show for tonight. Did you guys have a good time? How'd you like it? Oh yeah, thank you so much, Alyssa. I know that this was definitely a learning experience for me. I learned a lot from both of you guys, so thank you guys too. Yeah, thank you, um, I had a good time. Um, thank you for having me. I did learn a lot from, see different perspectives, and that was very interesting and, and worthwhile. Definitely, I would appreciate you for inviting me. It's, it's definitely a great group discussion, oh. and hopefully we can have it again. Oh, it was a pleasure having you guys. We'd like to thank PSN TV and all of you at home for watching. Have a great night.